Um, yeah, I very much welcome the opportunity to address some of the issues arising within our arts communities in light of the COVID-19 crisis. We are very lucky in Waterford to have a vibrant and thriving arts scene, but in common with the rest of the country, our venues, performance spaces and festivals um, have come to a dead stop. Um, our arts communities are among the sectors most acutely affected by the shutdown of our economy, particularly those who work in the performing arts, and they have little sight of how or when their practice and profession um, may begin to look, may begin to return whatever, to whatever our new normal is going to look like. Um, we know that the arts are going to play an essential part in how we process as a nation the huge impact that the coronavirus is having across our society. Arts practice has always been a mirror by which we, refle we reflect back on ourselves as individuals, communities, as a wider society. And in the wake of the pandemic, there will be a legacy of upheaval, of psychological strain and, and indeed of grief that we will need to work through as a nation. And I think our arts practitioners are going to be essential in mediating that process. Um, Corla, I think to understand the arts purely in terms of their economic function is to, to misunderstand the full value of their role. Um, however, the straight economic assessment of the impact of COVID-19 on the sector um, makes for fairly sobering reading. Um, the survey conducted by the Arts Council of its members estimates that organisations will lose approximately 2.9 million income for each month of the, of the shutdown. Expected losses and performances alone owing to cancellations are expected to top 5 million, and this survey only captures data from Arts Council members. The wider impact through the arts community can be expected to be far greater. Um, and yet, Count Corla artists will continue to create. So our poets are still writing, our painters are still painting, Musicians are still planning and practising repertoire in anticipation of reopening, the reopening of our economy. Workers in the arts sector have often proved themselves both flexible and resilient, and the reaction to the pandemic has been no different. Already, over 65 per cent of arts council organisations have initiated activities specifically in response to COVID-19, and over half have created or are specifically promoting online content or services. However, these new modes of presenting work present, represent a significant step outside of the traditional funding streams, and we need to make sure that artists will continue to get paid for the work that they produce. Minister, I want to begin my questions by asking about your plans to support the Arts Council over the coming weeks and months. I have noted that the National Campaign for the Arts have asked for an additional €20 million Euro funding for the Arts Council this year, and they have asked as well that uh, for that to be made available to artists through their bursary system. They are also asking for a commitment that the Arts Council funding be retained at the current levels in 2021 to allow them to begin to plan uh, their work, plan ahead in their work for the year coming. Um, Minister, I understand well the competing demands on the public purse at the moment, but can you give the NCFA some clarity on those specific asks? Staying with the Arts Council for the moment, I would like to welcome the establishment of the advisory group last week. While it was overdue, I was glad to see some action in this regard, and the membership of the group is strong, and I am hopeful that good work will result from it. However, I would appreciate if the Minister could outline the scope of that group, um, and if it is sector-wide or is it concentrated on specific areas, and if the Minister could briefly outline both the timelines and the mechanisms for the implementation of any uh, recommendations that advisory group produces at the end of its work. Um, turning to festivals for a moment, and we would all be aware of the massive void that their cancellation will leave both in our cultural lives and in our tourism offering. Um, Waterford, for example, is sometimes known as the city of festivals, with Spree, Waterford Walls, Winterville and many others punctuating our calendar year. Many, however, are faced with cancellation, but they have already committed a great deal of both time and resource. Without sufficient support to help absorb those costs and manage lost revenues, there is a distinct danger that many of our festivals across this country will not return in 2021. Has the Minister given any consideration of financial support that could be made available to this sector? And has she considered um, proposals from campaigns such as Give Us the Night to use pop-up events and multi-purpose spaces to help fill that the void left by festivals on a smaller scale that would allow us to, to answer the requirements of social distancing. As I referenced earlier, the art scene has already shown its flexibility in responding to the COVID crisis, with many performances in particular moving on to online platforms. 
However, I'd like to ask the Minister if she has made any provisions to support this move, both in terms of facilitating the quality of that output by, for example, funding the upgrading of recording equipment, but also in allowing artists to develop a revenue stream from online performance and arts practice. Many musicians in particular are developing content online, but without ensuring production values or income, it's hard to see how that model can be sustainable in the longer term. And finally, Minister, while none of us like to think of opportunity coming from this particular health emergency, perhaps there is a chance for arts organisations to use this quieter time to think through the structure and reach of their organisation, to take stock, to, to rethink and to rebuild. Arts organisations are typically busy in bustling places. They're often firefighting on, on deadlines and details. But I think with low-cost supports made available from the department at this time, now could be the time for them to refocus on the bigger picture so that when they do eventually reopen, they can have a clear idea of where they go from here in order to expand and develop their remit. So I'd like to ask the Minister if there are any plans within your department to facilitate and support this kind of development work within arts organisations to make best use of a quiet time. Thank you. Thank you Deputy.